All right, week 11. Uh, so sorry if this is late. This is actually the second time recording this video because I totally messed up and forgot to record an entire half of the first attempt at recording the video. So uh, apologies if it's late or the reactions are not so great, but I guess we should just uh, get right into this here. This past week's uh, contest was the Total Eclipse of the Heartline, where you had to build a coaster where one coaster overlapped another one from a certain specified uh, perspective. And I guess we'll just get right into that. This first one is from Matrix Coaster. It's called Nebula, Nebula and Boa. It says Nebula's Hedgehopper on the first drop does pass clearance. Very close, though. Exciting. And of course, we have KW success here as well. Hi. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, we did have Zonies for the original one, but he couldn't make the second version, second attempt at recording, unfortunately. But here we have it's an Intamin and then a Eurofighter in the back, and I remember this one was yeah. super cool because it totally hides the Eurofighter drop behind the loop here. That's so cool. Plus, we have the. Uh, hill here if i can stand on the platform get the hill here hiding with that and then this incline loop on the eurofighter is hiding behind the lift that's so cool yeah and as far as this template uh one of these coasters had to be taller than the blue line which is the eurofighter in this case the other one had to be shorter than the yellow line which is the green one and they only had to overlap when they were above this line around the edge which is usually red but they froze the coaster for some reason but let's take a look at... Let's do the Eurofighter first. Just because there's a train going up. It's also like a cool first drop, like a different one. Yeah, yeah the, the twist honestly. is like really cool. Yeah, like Vakalma style. Mm -hmm. We... Like oh, I forgot roll, about the, like the like super low roll, roll yeah. <coughs> This is the overlap with the hill. Yeah. Love those elements, the like overbank hang time thing. Yeah. And then that's the overlap with the lift, I guess. Stuff. Yeah, I guess it's not really a. Uh, not an in incline loop, unfortunately, but. What do we got? Mid course, twisted hill, hardline roll breaks. Oh, just an air tunnel. Fun little layout. Fun layout, yeah. And then we got the Intamin here, which is using the custom trains. Launch left hill. Yeah, it does have the launch. I forgot about that. That's fun. And it's like a custom Megalite style layout. Yeah. But with a loop instead of the airtime hill there, of course. Oh, this element was so cool. Yeah. Like airtime hill to... It's like off-axis hill into diving roll. Swing and brakes make me happy. Spring brakes are so fun. A unique brake setup. It parks like crazy fast. Yeah, on the return trip. Yeah. I guess you can do that though. Yeah. Nothing doesn't waste time. Yeah. for the roll, and then this one was so cool. The Twisted Hill. And then the Swing Brakes, and this super wide turn into the Brakes. Swing Brakes are always fun, though. Yeah. And this is a cool, like, unique looking element, too. Yeah. I don't know if it's like the blue, but my it, corkscrew. Yeah, it's like a hang time by corkscrew. Yeah, like a really neat 
That was just blue. Yeah, I don't know if it's like just the blue, but it reminds me of like the Dragonfire drop a little bit. No, I can see that. Very cool. Love to see it, yeah. Alright, let's take a look at... Actually, let's see how they line up one more time and then take a look at the next one. Yeah, behind that loop there. Behind there. And then behind the lift there. So cool. Very cool. Alright, let's see the next one. Alright, this is Ejector and Hellhound from One Zenith. It says, Ejector is a 100 foot tall weird wooden coaster with the platform perfectly covers large hills on Hellhound, and Hellhound is a 230 foot tall wooden hyper coaster, very large, with three inversions. So he was going to do scenery but ran out of time, and that is very large, you were right. Yeah. It's like, it's like crazy how you, can, like, you can't even tell it. There's like a hyper wooden coaster in the back, and they show like. Like, if you look in closer, like, on the first time, I couldn't really tell what was going on, but now I can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just huge in the back there. And then the roll over there with the double up, that's fine, because it overlaps there and for the lift. Yeah. All right. Let's take a look at this one. Love the concrete pad. And I think I pointed it out before, but that's a very GCI transition. Yeah. And this one as well coming up. Or, oh, no, no, not, not that one, but there is another transition made on the ride. It's more GCI type. I think it's on the other ride, actually. Was it? Maybe. This one's short and sweet. Yeah. It's a nice, like, succinct little layout. Mm hmm. But yeah, that's one where it like doesn't overbank and then drops out like Oh that. yeah, that. Yeah, yes. that's very right, right. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, very GCI. All right, let's take a look at the other one. Perfect timing. Well, I guess it could have been on the lift, but good as I can expect. And then this one's a gravity group. A very large gravity group. Yeah. Double up into the roll is hype with the little airtime hill coming out of it. I really like a little shape like that. Yeah, I agree. And I saw one lateral shift. Second big roll. And then we got another lateral shift. Lateral shift. Such an underrated. Lateral. Such an underrated like concept. Yeah. I think they're really fun on wooden coasters, personally. There's so much fun. Like, like, that one on the voyage in the middle is like so much fun. Yes. Four lateral shift. Five lateral shift. Cutback? I think that's it. The sort of thing? Yeah. And then into the brakes. They're like rampant by. What? It's like a very rampantly paced vibe. Yeah. Very fast paced despite being like so big. Yeah, the airtime coming out of this, like the roll's already done and it's getting a little pop afterwards. Cool. Very fun. I really like roll shaping like that. If you have the hype to do something like that. Yeah. Lateral shift, yeah. Yeah, I think it's the third hill on the voyage. It's like a small one between. Yeah. On the no, way I out. About. Yeah. I guess number three or number four. I feel like it's three, and then the fourth yeah. one is the third, like big one. Cut back through the lift there. Let's take a look from the platform here one more time. You can see it overlaps there. And overlaps there. 
Oh, there's a going down the drop. Very cool. Oh, did they overlap the entire thing? They had the, the hills in the back here are overlapping too. Pretty close. I didn't notice that before. Even cooler. Very nice. Let's see the next one. Alright, this is from TB. This is Arrow and Diablo. It says Arrow's floaty graceful while Diablo is snappier and more relentless. And we've got a Hyperia style Mac. And then a shock slash repaired rocket uh Mauer here. With some overlap here and some eclipsing here. Here, let's get on this uh this one before it goes. How hello? Oh. There it snapped to the complete other coaster. Just like right in front of it. That's funny. <coughs> yeah, high period drop, big airtime hill. <coughs> I think I'd said that this felt like a cross between like Hyperia and DC Rivals almost. Yeah. No, yeah, I really like most. And that's a fun element. Big stall. And then that interlocking corkscrews here. And up into the brakes. Cool, cool. Let's catch this one on the way out. Which one is this? This one's Diablo, so the other one's Arrow. So we got a launch, and then a little second launch. A little booster. Yeah, which is a very shock-esque, and then the non-inverting loop is very Rip Red Rocket-esque. Another low roll off-axis, and then this helix into the brakes. And into the brakes. Of course it's a Maurer, so it's got to have the super tight turning radius. I think it's like... Six feet, or no, nine feet on the radius, I believe. Whatever it is, it's like, like six, yeah, eight. it's so small. Yeah. They're just built different. They're like the timber liners of steel racers. And it's designed for like ridiculous articulation in general. Mm-hmm. Which is what lets them do like this. Yeah. That's very snappy out of there. But like in a good way. Let's get the high period drop, of course. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be so much fun in the back row. Yeah, dude. I'm just, I think Hyperia is going to be the best first drop in the world when it opens. I'm calling it now. I still, I still believe in Iron Rattler. That no, I think Iron Rattler is also incredible. Yeah, no, Iron Rattler is so much fun. That drop is insane. But it definitely has a potential to be up there. We'll see if it's better or not. Because I'm still, problem. yeah, because I'm still not a huge fan of the, the similarly shaped drop on the Skyrocket twos. Yeah. But we'll see. Hopefully it's better than the Skyrocket 2 ones. Because that could also totally just be because uh, those trains are awful. <laughs> I think it will be better, much better than the Skyrocket 2. It's more trains, too. 
it's beyond vertical three, it starts rolling super late. Like not until it hits beyond vertical, it starts is when it starts rolling. Like it rolls the last possible second. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we got overlap here, and it's a flat loop on top so that it hides better with the not inverting, and then the overlap on the airtime hill here. Very cool. All right, let's see the next one here. All right, this one is called Type Number by Foxhound. It says the coaster name is the overall name, also the only click once, not sure if it is or not. Also, I wasn't able to get the support zone time. No supports, it's not a problem. And I guess your one eclipse is there. Yeah. But this one is very different. Let's get on the uh, infinity here. Oh, they interact on the first pass. That's fun. He's doing the roll. Two seventy stalls are goaded. Time. And then that's kind of cool how it has the airtime pop like before it even reaches the top of the hill. Yeah, it's interesting. Very. Did I change this? No, I didn't change that back. Let's get to the hyper. <laughs> you getting sick? Yeah, I've, I've just been like a little sick like the past three weeks. I've been, I'm just coughing. Oh, three weeks. Damn. Yeah, it's a cough at this point. Damn. Well, hopefully yeah, that. Okay. Hopefully that goes away. Yeah, it's not a huge deal. But... That was a nice fast roll there. And then lots of little airtime hills into the brakes. Very nice. I think I just noticed this this time. But the infinity has like an air hill into a roll, and this one has a roll into an air hill, like right next to each other. It's kinda cool. That's neat mirroring. Yeah. Maybe they eclipse from somewhere like over here or something. Not quite, but close. Yeah, very unique. And then we can see the perspective from here. It's right there. Very cool. Very different. The idea of like a launched hyper is still pretty fun, honestly. I guess we'll have to see if one of those ever gets built. But let's take a look at the next one. Alright, this is Cat of the Potatoes with David and Goliath. <coughs> Let's go. I remember when you were sharing these off and showing me off in an LC. Yeah, I think I saw like one of the screenshots of it. But we got two. I think it's a Mac launch in the back. And then yeah. this like swing launch into in here. They say, please watch the first cycle of both coasters from the platforms. They have some nice visual interaction. Which it looks like, yeah, they do. Very fun. We've got the eclipsing up here and using like the double valley like pre-drop thing as a way to get more time on the eclipsing part which is cool but he says david is a small intimate launch coaster partially empowered by sandy's the deformed element diving turn less deformed element and dive loop it's the first coaster made using four sections in fbd very good accomplishment that's such a different way of thinking when you're yeah. building like that 
second over FVD coaster overall, the first being the Arrow Hyper from week four. I remember that one, that was also very cool. And then the other one here is hand built. Says, you know, Steve, it's a few feet too tall. You told on yourself. You didn't have to tell on yourself. I wouldn't have checked. <laughs> it's only over by six feet, three when counting the terrain, so yeah, that's barely anything, anyways. They're more along the they're, they're more of guidelines, you know. Uh, but he says Goliath is a large scale map coaster featuring four inversions, multiple airtime movements. I think it was cross between Maverick, Old Lightning Rod, and Blue Fire. Those are very different rides to be combining you know, like that. So that'll be interesting to see. But this, I believe, is David, yeah. Oh, with another launch up here, just to get it over. Have we got two cycles? We do, we have two cycles. And back into the station. Oh, all right. This one we got launched up hill and Goliath, I guess. Ah, oh, trim zero out of ten. Sorry. He's, he said, unfortunately, no ninety-five foot tall vertical loop jokes because it's like was one hundred and ten. But we can we can make the joke anyways. When we did the first recording, Zonies made a made a joke about it anyways. So. Unfortunately, you can't stop us. I definitely see what you mean about the... the Maverick and Lightning Rod, at least. Yeah. And it's like a little bit like Icon in there as well, almost. Which one? I don't know, I was like Icon as well, like, sort of. Oh, yeah. No, I get that. Especially this, like, last bit. Yeah. But, very cool. Alright, let's take a look at this one. I like the supports on this one. These are cool. They like, really, like, unique support design as well. Like, very, like, shared structures. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Take a look at this one. And they use the Helix nose car. Yeah, this part's very Maverick, of course. And then the ending, this double down, it feels more like Lightning Rod to me. Let's get one more view from here. <coughs> Very cool. Oh, and I think you said last time that this, like, turn over the water reminds you of a uh, raven. Raven. Yeah. Yeah, the iconic turn over the water coaster. Very cool. Let's see the next one here. This is Art by Curtis with two moons. So it's watch in perspective, then hit F5 to either enter 100 or 150 to ride. And this was a super unique take on this. Because we're standing on the platform here. But the overlap is like entirely within the boundary, which is not what I was expecting at all. Oh, we gotta watch it go up. Because it's basically two more <laughs> tall scrambles, but one of them is like bigger. Yeah. Oh, and the trains like sink too. 
so cool. It's really cool. We'll wait for the reverse, because he says the reverse has the best train sync. You don't even see the other one. <laughs> That's so funny. But yeah, it's just two Moonsault scrambles. But like one of them is 150% scale, I guess. With the very Moonsault scramble supports. Let's ride this one first. Nope, I guess we're riding the other one first. I guess there's not too much to ride anyways, because it's just Moonsault Scramble. <laughs> Although uh, Zonies pointed out last time that the reason Moonsault Scramble had so insane positives was because it didn't have a, <coughs> a chain assist on the other side. It just full forced it the first time. <laughs> yeah. Just like... 6G or something sustained, or 6 or 8G sustained on Moonsault. I want to say it was like 6.4. Yeah. Well, watch this one from the back, actually. Just because arrows are kind of fun to watch from the back sometimes. And I like the faded train colors, of course. Yeah, I want to say Moonsault was 6.4 positives. It's like 6.4 or 6. I'll go check. I'm very curious. Because the um, Tower of Terror. 6.5. Yeah, okay, so Tower of Terror must have been 6.4 then. <laughs> and then, yeah, from this perspective here again. Where they just totally overlap the main elements there. That's so fun. Interesting take on it, especially with like such a limited amount of time to just do the same thing twice but bigger. It's kind of cool. Yeah. But with like the entire symmetry. Yeah, especially with the entire first ride inside of the circle. That's not what I expected at all. Very cool. Awesome. Let's see the next one. Great. And this is... The park is named Disappearance with Odd and Mysterious by Muffles. Which they say RMC Trains by Coaster Pete. <coughs> and we have an RMC and a Mac. Let's see, it's another Launch Lift Hill. It's just Launch Lift Hill week, apparently. Yeah, like I'm surprised when they want the fill we see in general. But I feel like that is kind of what people have to do to like keep the verse right under the height limit. Um, like to still have like an exciting layout. You that's know, true. With a throw layout and stuff. Yeah, that's true. I guess that does give you a little bit of like extra speed at the top. Yeah. Interesting take on it. I hadn't even thought of it that way. But we got the overlap on the drop and lift here. And then also here where the Mac does a regular hill. <laughs> And then the RMC has like a slight double tap up just before it, which is cool. I always like those. All right, let's get on this next Mac train. <laughs> the very green catwalks and very blue train. Second launch here. 
And then we go into this concrete thing and it's a fake out drop. Which is always so fun. Reverse bank. Once like untamed, that little dip off the roll. Untamed yeah. Untamed is like the exact same thing. Yeah, it does. Untamed is fun because it like the roll like starts on the ground and it goes upwards a little bit. So yeah, you, you start on the ground and it feels like it's gonna stay there and then it just uh, goes into the little. It just has a little dip afterwards. Yeah. Have you done untamed? I have. Nice. The two I'll be the others. Uh, <laughs> it's just timbers, but like more varied. Okay. Which I think is a good thing, and also the 270 stall is like godlike. Oh yeah, the 270 stall looks incredible. It honestly. is. It feels surprisingly similar to Lightning Rod's big wave turn, except that you're like spinning the whole time. Okay. Yeah, like that man. It's so cool. And this one's also very cool. It's got some like a little bit of like Hakuge and then a little bit of Medusa Steel Coaster, I think. Yeah, definitely. Maybe a little bit of Zodra here too. Yeah, big Z. Oh, I think I said Wildfire last time. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, last time said Wildfire is the yes though. But honestly, I am such a big fan of this like weird shaped double up with the like super shallow up here. I think those are so fun. Just to have like unconventionally shaped double ups like that. Because <laughs> it's so, it looks so whack, but it rides just fine. Yeah. And then this goes over another lateral shift for the win. Yeah. The big roll. And like a little bit of a drop out of the roll. Mm hmm Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, a bit of a drop. Let's see, do we have a train going on either of these? I guess we have a train on the RMC here. Yeah, let's just see this double up. Yeah, that's so fun. Roll. And then the nice wave turn, of course. And then for the Mac here. I think I'd said this one kind of reminds me of like, um, was it Storm? Yeah, but that not like Yeah. <coughs> and then there was the other one that I completely forgot existed that I. I'll pee the blitz. Yeah. Yeah, the fake out here is fun. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. I didn't even notice it the first time, too. time. Oh, and they're in sync too. Nice. Very fun. That's another really cool little detail. Yeah. <coughs> Very cool. All right, awesome. Um, and I think that's it for this week. We only had seven entries this week. Because I think it was a two coaster. It was kind of a weird prompt, and the time was also pretty short, so I'm not surprised at all. But uh, I guess we can look into the winners from the previous week, which was the bridge prompt. 
Uh, so this week, for well, I guess last week, we have a queen. We have a clean sweep again, and it's not Dark Star. Surprise. So for overall best, we actually had a three-way tie for second place with uh, ML Design, Secret Style, and Coaster Jappy. All had two votes, and then with ten votes, over half was Tango with Stunt Flight, which was that super Let's cool uh, Mac with like the two corkscrews around the bridge. I think that was so cool, and Thomas really loved that one. And then for best use of template, uh, Jeremy's Coaster Yard got third with the Rally Coaster. ML Designs with Brook Looping got s second with six. And then with just over half, with nine votes, was Changa Stunt Flight again. <coughs> so Changa, like, clean sweep this week. Was this the third person to clean sweep? I think so. But yeah, congratulations on that. Always cool to have that. And that one was such a cool entry. It was very well deserved, I think. Congratulations again to Changa and all the running up uh, winners. Uh, as usual, don't forget to vote for your favorite that you saw this week using the link at the top of the description down below. Uh, without further ado, let's get into this week's prompt. Now, as you can see, this week's prompt is called Rollin' Rollin' Rollin'. And some of you might be thinking that that sounds sort of similar to the idea of the clockwise contest from week three. And you would be correct. That is, this is going to be sort of a spiritual successor to uh, uh, clockwise. Uh, we got lots of super cool entries that were unique and honestly not at all what I was expecting. Um, and the past two weeks here have both been template weeks, so I think it's time to go back and do something without a template. So for this week's prompt, sticking in the theme from the previous one, is all about uh, your roll nodes and how you go about rolling. It was actually a version of this. This is kind of adapted from a version that uh, Crystalic proposed to me. Um, their idea was that once you start rolling, you can never stop. Or, like, in one direction, you can't stop rolling in that direction. But I think I, what I'm going to interpret that as for the sake of this, and what this contest prompt is going to be, is that once you start rolling in any direction, you can continue rolling in any direction you like, but you can never pass back through... A zero roll point. So what that means is you can turn in any way you want, you can roll in either direction you want, clockwise or counterclockwise, you can start rolling, you can stop rolling, anything you want, as long as you don't ever pass back through flat zero roll. You can have an off-axis hill, you can have a zero-g roll, but at the ends of those things, you can never pass through a flat horizontal section of track. Um, this one is a little bit easier to like conceptually uh, understand because in the in the um, clockwise prompt it was confusing because there was no way to like measure roll rate in the game. But there is a way to measure your zero roll point. You can just place a roll point with the value of zero. And the idea of this contest here is that you should not be able to do that without significantly changing the track uh, at any point in your layout. Like, for example, if you were to do a double zero G roll, um, that would not be allowed because if you were to place a roll directly at the top in the middle of it, it would still be, it would be at the zero point. It would pass through the zero point. So you could place a roll at the top of it, at the very tip top of a double zero G and it wouldn't significantly change the track. In fact, it wouldn't do anything at all with no limits as a uh, continuous roll. But say, for example, you were to do a single zero G roll, uh, well, that would be just fine. You could also do any other combination of zero G rolls and turns, so long as at no point during the ride 
after you've started rolling. So like brake runs and station and lifts and stuff obviously is fine to be uh, at a zero roll point because that's just kind of how they function. Uh, but once you deviate from that, you should never be able to pass through the zero point again. This means that anytime you want to change roll directions, you are going to have to invert as well because you can never pass through the zero point, uh, you know, from the right side up position, but uh, from uh, 180 degrees upside down, that's totally fine. Hopefully that is a clear enough explanation. Um, if you have any questions about it, obviously you can, as usual, ask down in the comments below or find me on Discord or, you know, the likes of that. And as usual, again, entries are going to be due on this upcoming Wednesday at 12 noon, and then and submissions are going to close whenever I make the video after that. There's no template this week because it's purely a, a role-based template. Uh, do remember to name your files something that I can find them when I go through and download them to uh, share with you all. But as always, the submission form is going to be in the description uh, a little lower down. Do vote for your favorite you saw this week again. That's going to be at the top of the description. And I think that just about wraps it up for this week. I will see you all next week.